Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I believe the Lord wants me to share just a little something with you from the book of Ezekiel. And I believe it's chapter one moment right there, Jeremiah Ezekiel. Um, Praise God. <laughs> so I'm like sitting in on my lap. <laughs> Still at my mom's. So she's probably ready for me to leave by now. <laughs> mm. Snow again. I had a wonderful time. We made homemade chili in the crock pot and homemade oatmeal raisin cookies with vegan egg replacement. Of course, that was my mother's idea. Oh, goodness gracious. Watch the Oscars and all of that type of stuff. And that was fun. And some of my behavior with the health of Israel said it. That's what I'm looking for. That's easy to fail. It shouldn't be different if you put it at the beginning of the chapter. Oh, Jesus, would it not be weak here? Is that what the Lord is saying? Would it not? I'm sure. I mean, and it's a scripture that you, you all know. I mean, we should. I mean, because most of my subscribers are really just basically like my YouTube friends who are Christians, which is another reason. I'm like, is this really like, <laughs> you know? But <laughs> the Lord said He called me to the to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The lost sheep are not gathered here on YouTube. But then again, the Lord gives the increase, and He does gather them. Um, you know, I when I came. On YouTube, I think it was 09. There was some that's been here since 07. And, uh, you know, and the numbers have been increasing. So, um, you know, I guess the. Yeah, it's not Ezekiel. My mind is in Ezekiel. And it's Amos. And I might as well just use the online Bible because I have to give you the Hebrew and all of that. I wonder if this is the Bible, as you can see. My mother said, ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> One thing you know about an old beat-up Bible is that it has it being used. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Maybe we'll be back to five. So, the Bible says in Amos chapter 6 verse 1, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion, and trust in the mountain of Samaria, which are named chief of the nations, to whom the house of Israel came. Of course, now they will say because I'm a Westerner. They will say because I'm American. They will say that Americans are always very, well, egocentric is that the word? Egotistical perhaps is the word. Where, you know, everything is always about America in our eyes. And, you know, that's true to an extent. And there's some envy and some jealousy on the part of other nations and other people um, in regards to, you know, just the Americans. Oh, we're so stuck up and we think we're all this and that. You know, they have these ideas. And, and they, I mean, you know, you travel and they want to prove to you that, you know, they're better. And in a lot of cases, you know, like in Africa, they teach them many different languages, and most people in America don't know many languages, and they have a lot more respect. You will see um, people on their knees asking forgiveness from pastors and bishops and prophets, you know, and calling them sir and everything like that, you know, in Africa, it's like Nigeria specifically. And, um, you know, just, just when it comes to, I want to say morality, well, really just respect and honor and dignity and things like that, you see see that more in other countries, especially the poorer ones, you know. And so I can understand that. But I do feel that this speaks perhaps to many nations, other countries, but definitely to America because it says, which are named chief of the nation. Now, I did not look up the word chief, strong H7225. says first beginning best. Now we know that America is supposedly the most powerful nation even though that's seeming to be changing rapidly. 
But, um, you know, so when you say chief of the nations, of course, for me that means America. Now, what I did look up is Zion because it says they are at ease in Zion. Let me know, okay, Zion means parched place. Is another name for Jerusalem, especially in the prophetic books. So, how do they do it? They teach a hermeneutics or whatever. One is isolated and one is more expanded. Isogesis and exogesis, something like that. Whatever. Specifically, Amos was speaking of Jerusalem, of course, which the word Zion means parched place. I don't know how it got that name. Um, just as I speak, you know, the Lord, our God, is a consuming fire. And so it may just represent the fact that, you know, God is there. And because the fire is so parched place, you understand. Um, I don't know. Sometimes it spells the F. Um, and it says here in the, um, that the root word, it says the same regularly as Strong's H6725, which means title, waymark, and sign. And then, you know, when I click that and I look it up, it, it gives you a little bit better understanding. It says signpost monument market. So they are at ease because of their signposts, because of their titles, because you can say, well, we are Russia. Well, we are America. Well, we are this, we are that. Because the stock market, you see the word means market because of their monument. You know, you have um, the Pentagon and you have all these buildings where your business is taken care of and you know, all the things that make us powerful, our military and our economy and things like that. That's why I said the stock market or just the market in general. They are at ease because they have things. They have material things. You understand? And that's what I get out of this scripture. And I know that it's a Bible because if you continue to go on, I read verse 1 for you. And verse 2 says, Pass ye unto Kelnar and see, and from thence go ye to Hamath the great. Then go down to Gath of the Philistines. Be they better than these kingdoms, or their border greater than your border? It says, Ye that put far away the evil day, and cause the seat of violence to come near. You are causing the seat of violence to come near. The chaos, the destruction, you're bringing it upon yourself because you're at ease. You think everything is, as they say in these times, all good. So they sneak in. You're worried about the fact that Russia is doing what they're doing in the Ukraine, but you're paying no attention to the fact that they have a freaking warship which just pulled up onto the beach in Cuba. No explanation from the Cuban government. No explanation from the Russian government. My issue is how in the name of all that is holy and righteous did the American military have no clue or as my mother would say, not a clue nor a vow, that the daggone ship was even anywhere near Cuba. But apparently, somehow, we didn't know. Or did we know? Because you know, I don't trust none of them. My father said the Lord told him in the 80s that they are all in cahoots. They are all in cahoots. I've told you the story about when I went to visit the United Nations building in elementary school, and the demons was just everywhere. I mean, literally just jumping off the walls. It was bananas. I went to go sit down because I thought, oh my goodness. This is like where the important people are, and this is where like the decisions are made. And, oh, I want to be a politician. I think I want to work for the United Nations. Oh my goodness, you know. Like, and I would just sit down, and the voice said, "Don't sit there." And when it said, "Don't sit there," it gave me the understanding that the people who I said, "Oh my gosh, oh the demons get in the they they when you sit in this, sit in these chairs, that's when the demons get in you." I remember thinking that, and then I understand now that sitting in the chair physically. Is more so, it was more so speaking of sitting in the chair as in you've been given this title, this position, and so then yes, these spirits come and do all sorts of things and enter into different portals and gateways and things and your past and your DNA and, and just, they, oh my gosh, it's a big mess. And so, um, yeah, they're all in cahoots, I don't trust any of them. But anyway, their, their warship is docked in Cuba. They can blow Miami up whenever they get ready. And I mean, I say Miami, but Atlanta, D.C., New York, I don't know how far those missiles go. So if you over there, you worried about, they done met in Paris. Woe unto them that are at ease in Zion, and trust in the mountain of Samaria, which are named chief of a nation through whom the house of Israel came. 
skipping down verse 4 that lie upon beds of ivory and stretch themselves upon their couches and eat the lambs of the flock and the calves out of the midst of the stall that chance to the sound of the veil which is like a violin I presume and invent to themselves instruments of music like David that drink wine and bows and anoint themselves with the chief ointments once again best but they are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph now Mm, mm, mm. It says, therefore now shall they go captive with the first that go captive, and the banquet of them that stretch themselves shall be removed. So there's going to be no banquet. You're chilling, you're relaxing on your couch, and you're watching your little movies and your TV shows, and you're, you got your nice, you know, olive oil or uh, 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 shea butter. You know, us African, you know us. <laughs> As darker people, we need a little bit more thickness. We like to our oils. We like the shea butter and cocoa butter. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. I live, you know, just very chat. You had to go buy me some Carmack. Yes, you're going to cut your hair. When you, like, like us, when I'm speaking for, for my culture. You know, you got to grease your scalp. Mm-hmm. Yes, and you, and you stretch out. And you have the best foods and drinks and clothes. And, oh, life is wonderful because I have all these things. Like I said, Zion, go to the root word, and it means the market. See, these are all things you can buy in the marketplace, material things. That's why I know my interp interpretation is correct, because when you read down and you keep it in context, okay, line upon line and precept upon precept, which the precept is basically a concept, the whole idea. You can pair, you can, you know, it don't have to always be verse 5, verse 6, verse 7. you got to go chapter to chapter and, and verse to verse and book to book, and this is why. When I'm looking for Amos 6.1, I'm saying where we're going to, the Lord is going to have me share to you from Ezekiel. Because as I'm reading things in Amos last night, of course, I also see things in Ezekiel, such as uh, chapter 12, verse 26. Again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, people say, the vision that he seeth is for many days to come, and he prophesieth continues to prophesy, that ETH means continue, it means he's still prophesying, of the times that are far off. And it ain't a non-believer. It's not the lukewarm. I know lukewarm people. That's basically everybody I know, and I'm a little lukewarm, a little double-minded, you know. I have my own issues and my own struggles, working out my own soul salvation. Faith without works is dead. Show me your faith without works, and I'll show you my faith through works, the Bible says. And so, you know, I have issues of my own, but it's not the um, it's not them that that deny that disbelieve. It's those that claim to be all the way in to know God the most. To oh, been preaching for fifty years, thirty years, whatever the case may be. And up the, the preachers, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, the parents, the grandparents. It's all, you know the family, the friends. They it's the people mm, 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 of God. That's why the Bible doesn't say that the heathens say. It doesn't say that the Gentiles say. It doesn't say that the Palestinians, the Philistines, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Amorites, the Hittites. It don't say nothing about nothing. It says that the house of Israel say the vision that he sees is for many days. I, there's nothing you can tell me. I already know. I bet, son, I've been through that. You know, I've been preaching that for 30 years. And you... The difference with, between them and the lukewarm is that they listen. Oh, I watch your video. Oh, you know, I believe everything you say. Oh, well, you know, yeah, I heard, and I, and I know you right. Well, you know, I was because I signed up for this website. But then they don't live their life. It's back and forth. Back, back, forth, and forth, like Aaliyah. You see, but it is what it is. It is what it is. So anyway, they're the easy dying. They're chilling. They relax. It's all good. Because, yeah, yeah everything's pretty good. You know, work, you know, and, and I have my job and everything. And so this is what they feel like. Everything's great. It says, and then they trust in the mountain of Samaria. Now, we're going back again. Because, you know, i got to break these things down. You know, people say, you think you know everything. It's not that I think I know everything. I would be stupid to think I know everything because I am not God and only God knows everything. But one thing I do know is that I 
know a lot because God himself has given me wisdom and understanding and I have studied to show myself approved unto God a workman that needs not be ashamed. And so because others don't care, think it's not important, think it's irrelevant, refuse to understand that whatever it is I share is what it is God has given me, it may not be important to you. It may not be relevant to you. You may not think that it takes all of that. Oh, you shouldn't be worried about that. Well, there's no need to panic what it is, what it is. But I trust God. So insinuating that I don't, insinuating that I have little faith or no faith, insinuating that it's just, you know, all oh, whatever, it's just no, of no use. It's like, why are you even talking about that? Well, you know, tell them, don't tell me. Who is the them? Because everyone tells me, I've, several people have told me, well, you don't have to tell me. You know, tell them. Well, who are the them that you think I should be telling? First in Judea, then in Sumeria. Uh-huh. Jesus was speaking to Jews. Now, I don't know what tribe all the disciples were from. I know Judah. His name is Judah. And Iscariot means of Kerioth, which is a city not far from Bethlehem. He probably was around Jesus' age when Jesus was born, so it was this, this Judah. Judas is the Greek pronunciation. But he was Judah. He was from Kerioth, which is in Judea. He was a Jew. So you got to preach first to the Jews. You a Jew. So, and you're preaching first to the Jews. So what that means is talk to your family. Yes, your mother, your father, your grandparents, your sisters, your brothers. All of them. Then Samaria. You know, Judea and Samaria is right then. Okay, so now you're expanding. Okay, now we're talking about friends and associates. Then to the uttermost parts of the world. Okay, then the YouTube people. But see, people, it's like they don't understand. They know not what they do, the Lord says, it's, you know, the Lord says it, but they don't know. They don't know. So nobody wants to hear it, that's what they tell me. But they trust in the mountains of Samaria. Mountain, hill country, mount, a shortened form of the word which means mountain, hill. It can also be translated as promotion. As we see... In Psalm 75, verse 6, for promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. Amen. And then I'm sure it goes on, and I might as well just look it up for you. You guys know the first way the promotion comes from. But God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. So they trust in promotion. They trust that it, every promotion, think of a mountain. It's almost a pyramid shape, right? So then you have steps, you have levels, boom, boom, boom. You think you're going to be promoted. You think that all is well. Because all is well in your eyes, you think it's going to continue to be well. So you trust in the promotion, the mountains of Samaria. But, okay, so if mountain can be translated promotion, and that's the word that the Lord would have had me to um, focus on. So mountain is promotion. So what do you think Samaria means? Well, let's just see. Strong H. H. One, one, one. The Watch Mountain. The region of northern Palestine associated with the northern kingdom of the ten tribes of Israel, Israel, which split from the kingdom after the death of Solomon during the reign of his son Rehoboam, and were ruled by Jeroboam. The capital city of the northern kingdom of Israel, located 30 miles north of Jerusalem. So you trust in your capitals, and in, in your, you trust in your Congress, you trust in your political system, you trust in your government. That it's been that all has been well and it's going to continue to promote and to be well. You think it's going to discontinue? It's going to just everything you know. Your country going to just stand forever. From the act part of a word that means observe, keep, 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 or preserve, beware, mark, watchmen. You trust in your watchmen. You trust in what the daggone people on the news say, the media. You trust in your military. So they're at ease because of their material things, and they trust in the strength of their military. That's Amos 6. You can go read it for yourself and read. Um, hmm. But what does God say? That they should be first to go into captivity. God bless you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen.